Within eight weeks, my partner and I managed to create a mobile app that registered over 1 million users in just two months. Simple to use, pleasing to the eye, and praised for its influence, what started as a knockoff app called Foursquare turned into a billion dollar buyout. And all this happened before the age of 30. I was born on December 30th, 1983 in Holliston, Massachusetts to a fortunate family. My father was vice president in human resources for a department store corporation, with their most recognized being TJ Maxx. And my mother was a marketing executive for many dot-com companies, including Monster and Zipcar. Similar to my mother, I was attracted to technology and computers. By playing computer games like Doom, I began creating my own levels out of curiosity. Sometimes I would create programs that acted like it hacked into my friend's AOL messenger accounts. I always had a knack for using what was around me at the time and tweak it to my needs, but I didn't expect the skill and creativity to get me where I am today. My first job was in high school, working at a record store that sold old school vinyl records. I loved music and at the time, I really wanted to be a DJ, so working at the record store helped me immerse myself into the music. I eventually got a few DJing jobs and with the help of friends, they snuck me into clubs since I was still under 18. If there's one thing I know about myself, it's this. If I am obsessed with something, I will completely immerse myself and try to know everything about it. It's just who I am and how fixed I get once something's in my mind. This behavior allowed me to focus deeply on my school Schooling where I was accepted into Stanford University. Some will say that school is everything to your future, but for me, school was just academic and boring. I wanted something that could be applied and used in everyday life, so I majored in management science and engineering. In my free time, I would build web programs and create games for friends. I always saw it as a fun hobby and something to learn and toy around with. The good news was, I was studying at a school that had the world's largest techies all in one area, Silicon Valley. During my studies, I interned at multiple places, my most memorable being a podcast sharing startup called Odeo. I learned more than I ever would from a book and from the founders who would later create Twitter. I felt alive and it never felt like work, but I was determined to learn more and explore. So I finished my internship and during my senior year at Stanford, I got a job working at Google. I was their associate product marketing manager, managing Google Calendar, Gmail, Docs, and other products. As a first job, I was thrilled to be there, but after two years, I started to feel bored and had this undeniable itch to do more. I wanted to create something cool and become an entrepreneur, not be stuck in a corporate structure. So when a few employees were leaving to start their own startup product, I jumped at the opportunity to try something new and grow. I quit my job at Google and went to work for Nextstop as their product manager. Remember, I didn't have any formal computer training, so I couldn't be a coder. Luckily, the startup allowed me to learn from their coders and on nights and weekends, I would spend hours building my own app called Bourbon. It was an app that allowed people to check in, post photos, and earn points for hanging out with their friends. Although it was only a prototype, it did lead me to create one of the world's most widely used apps. I thought my app had everything it needed for social media and I wanted to develop it further. The only problem was my time was now limited working full time and I needed the money to successfully build it. While at a startup party, I met two venture capitalists. I showed them my prototype and they liked where I was headed. Excited, I quit my job again, but this time to focus on my own product. Within two weeks, I was able to raise $500,000 from both of those men. I now had my perfect app, money to build it and time, but I was missing a team. In 2010, I was able to find an old friend from college, Mike Krieger, a 25-year-old who was working at Mebo at the time. He was a computer engineer, working on user experience and design. After explaining my app idea, he left his job and joined me. Although he wasn't completely sold on my product, so we both took a step back and really looked at the product. Mike helped me focus on what really mattered, what we wanted to be good at. At the time, Bourbon was starting to get noticed, but it was too similar to another app called Foursquare, an already established social check-in app. Ours was cluttered, messy, and it had too much going on. I didn't want it to look like every other app. I only wanted it to be social and cool. Taking apart each feature and discussing what we liked most, we made the very risky decision to completely start from scratch and build an entirely new app from the ground up. We kept the comment and like capabilities and focused on only one thing, photos. Little did we know, that decision solidified our future towards one of the most successful social apps created, Instagram. 
The name came from two words, instant and telegram. It had a catchy ring and it was easy to say. Of course, we had to have other features to the app so it would be more eye-catching and fun to use, but it remained simple, clean, and easy to use. We studied photography for weeks trying to find out what stood out, what was popular, and what was most interesting. By far, what people loved the most were filters. For the next eight weeks, we worked obsessively to perfect Instagram, testing it with friends, making it easy and simple to use as possible. And on October 6, 2010, we launched for iOS Apple. The next day, we became the top free photo sharing app. We never expected to be popular. At first, mainly photographers posted their pictures, but when celebrities began using it, we knew it was gonna explode. Within a week, Instagram had over 100,000 downloads and in just two months, over a million users. I would have been happy with 10,000 users, but when it hit over a million, I knew we had created something massive. Investors began offering us million dollar investments, which was crazy because we had less than 10 people working at our office. The largest offer came in April, 2012, when Facebook made an offer we could not refuse. They purchased our app that took eight weeks to build for $1 billion. And this all happened before I turned 30. Today, Instagram has over 800 million active users and over 300 million daily stories, 95 million photos uploaded per day, 4.2 billion likes a day, and 40 billion photos shared. When people ask me what makes Instagram so important, I tell them this. Anyone can build a social photo sharing site. And in fact, many people have. Our community is the biggest asset, so we need to protect that. Make sure the people are happy. My name is Kevin Sistrom, and together with Mike Krieger, I created a billion-dollar app known as Instagram.